ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्य कोटी समप्रभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देवा सर्वकारेशु सर्वदा आंगिक भुवन यचिक आहार्य चंद्रतारादि तम नम सात्क शिव गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरुर्साक्षा पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभ क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा ओं सहना सहनौ भुन तो सह वीर कर वह तेजस्वी नाम दीत नमस्तु मेदिषा वह ओं शांति 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 हरि ओं सद्गुभ्यो नम हरि थैंक यू वेरी मच दिदिला गुड चैंटिंग बाय यू एंड सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा सो दिस मींस राइट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट गुरु और वी से आदि गुरु दट इज सदा शिवा इटर्नल शिवा हु हैज गिवन द नॉलेज टू द नेक्स्ट पर्सन हियर इज शंकरा शंक next is so many uh, gurus are there but in middle of all them is shankaracharya and through shankaracharya we have so many shankaracharya gurus. yeah shankaracharya so many guru parampara has come and for us is swami parmarananda ji okay that is a parampara which is following so to all of them and this parampara my pranams गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम एंड टू मै गुरु डॉक्टर तिम्मा हेगड़े मै प्रणाम बिकॉज ऑफ हिम टूडे वी आर एबल टू डू दिस क्लास वंडरफुली एंड ऑलमोस्ट इट्स टू इयर्स चिल्ड्रन इट इज गोइंग वेरी वेल बिकॉज ऑफ युअर पार्टिसिपेशन your enthusiasm and your questions and answers so we will start today with the chanting of chapter 18 51 to 60 verse by salokya is it salokya or uh... sir mine is done sorry 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 it is not salokya it is okay pragna go ahead pragna namaskaram everyone today i'll be chanting uh, from verse 61 to verse 70 of the 18th chapter ishwara sarva bhutanam ritesh arjuna tishtathim bhram brahmayan sarva bhutani yantra rudhani mayaya तमेव शरण गच्छा सर्वभाव भारता तत्द शांति स्थान प्राप्य प्राप्यसी शाश्वत ख्यात गुह्या गुह्यतर मैया विमृष्ये दसासेन ये चसी तथा कुरु सर्वागुह्यतम भूय शृण मे पर वच इष्टोसी मे दृद्मती तथो वक्ष्यामीते हित मन्मना भाव मद्भक्त मध्याजी ममस्कुरु मे वैश्यसि सत्यम ते प्रतिजाने प्रियोसी मे प्रत्यज्य मेक शरण व्रजा 
अहम पापेभ्यो मोक्ष्य मोक्ष्य इदम ते नाटपस्काय नाभक्ताय कदाचन नाचाश्रूषावाच्यम नाचाम्यो भ्य सूसती परमंगुष्यम मद्भक्ते मद्भक्तेशीय सती भक्ति मयि परा मे वैश्य संशय नस्मुस्येसु कशिन् मे प्रिय भविता चे तस्मा धन्य प्रय धन्य प्रियतरो भुवि अज्ञेष्यते चम धर्म्या संवादमो धन्यवाद एक्सीलेंट एंड यू डिड विद ऑल योर एग्जाम सो मेनी थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन वेरी नाइस विद दिस वी कम टू द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ भगवद गीता चैंटिंग एट मोर वर्सेस चिल्ड्रन एंड दैट विल बी डन बाय नन अदर देन विष्णु हिमसेल्फ our little vishnu who will do it the end of this bhagavad gita chanting and that it comes to the one of the temples as we always learned new temples or the very uh, ancient temples of india and today swastik has prepared for dakshineshwara temple over to you swastik yes sir Hari Om, everyone. Today I have been given a chance by Sachin sir. Dakshineshwar uh, Temple, one uh, one of the greatest temples in West Bengal, situated. Um, I shall start with it by right now. So the location is actually uh, the Dakshineshwar is situated on the east of the Gang of the Ganga River. and west bengal it is also locally called the hubli river hubli river is considered sacred to hindus and its water is actually considered holy its architecture style is also good is also inspiring built in the navaratna or ninth fire style of bengal architecture the three story south facing temple overall it measures 46 feet or 14 meters square And rises over a hundred feet or thirty meters high. The 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 Garba Griha or Sanctum Sanctorum houses an idol of Ga of Goddess Kali, also locally known as Ma Bhavatari, standing on the chest of a supine Shiva. And the two idols are placed on a thousand petal lotus throne made of silver. History: The Dakshineshwar Kali Temple. is the presiding deity uh, of the temple uh el bhavatari a form of parashakti adya kali otherwise known as adi shakti kalika the temple was built in 1855 by rani rashmini as zamindar philanthropist and a devotee of kali the temple is known for its association with ram krishna param shri ram krishna paramahansa chaudha padhyay and ma Who were known as mystics of the 19th century Bengal. So next slide. The main temple was inspired by Navaratna style Radha Ganta temple. The temple compound, apart from the ninth spired main temple, contains a large courtyard surrounding the temple with rooms along the boundary walls. 
the Shiva temple. A series of 12 identical Shiva temples are established within the premises of the Devadaya. Opposite to the Kutibari, these are close to the banks of the river Ganga. There is also a Vishnu temple here, which is to the northeast of the temple complex, where, which is known as the Vishnu temple or Radha Kantas temple. Sir, second. Is this correct? No, sir. This is the second last one. Sir, before it's this, before this one also. Ah, uh, this one I, I was supposed to say, right? Okay. History. Long-term plan of the Rani Rashmani materialized when she had long to perform when her husband died with an unfulfilled wish of constructing a Kali temple. The dream had moved the Rani intensely and she instructed her trusted people, especially her youngest son-in-law, thoughts to construct the Kali temple. After a massive plot, a 20-acre plot in the village of Dakshinika was selected. The guidance of the gods and the goddesses were decided to be installed on a Snan yesterday and for the Hindus. Rani Rashmani had Problem, which she discussed in length with her pundits, but none could solve her problem. Where, which was who should be put in charge of the temple? So, so nobody could answer it, but only Ram Kumar Chattopadhyay, Sri Ramkrishna's elder brother, suggested that dedicating the temple to a Brahmin could overcome the existing problem. So, next slide. Mahabhavataini. Dakshineshwar Temple was founded on the 31st of May 1835 or in the Bengali calendar. Ah, Atharo Jyoti Joyshto 1262. The holy city was on Jagannath Deva Snanyatra. The Dakshineshwar Temple was founded on the suspicious day after facing many conflicts. The Rani Ma, called by our people out of adoration and love, respect and love, installed the Sri Jagadeshwari Ma, the mother of the universe under the priesthood of Sri, Ram, Sri Ram Kumar Chattopadhyay, the elder brother of Sri Ram Krishna. Now, and now finally we get to yeah, himself, Sri Sri Ram Krishna, Sri, Sri Ram Krishna Paramahamsa Chattopadhyay. Ram Krishna, before called Gadadar, who had experienced spiritual ecstasies from a young age, started a spiritual journey as a priest at the Dakshineshwar Kali Temple, appointed by Rani Rashman. He, he was actually given the uh, role gradually over time by his brother himself. Yeah, anyways, he adhered to various religious practices from Bhakti Yoga. Tantra, Advaita, Vedanta, as well as from Islam, Islamics and Christianity before proclaiming that the world's various religions are so many paths to reach one and the same goal. Ram Krishna used to be an extraordinary believer in Mother Kali, such that he used to cry to Mother Kali just to get a glimpse of her. And once he got what, she, what he wanted, he used the knowledge from her encounter to not only, not only for solving real life problems, but to also pave way, pave the way for great personalities like his well, like his well-known disciple, Narendranath Vivekananda Datta. Soon, his mystical temperament gained, gained him a widespread acknowledgement amongst the general public as a guru. According to him, many various religious teachers, social leaders, Bengali elites, and common people alike. He eventually taught his disciples who later formed the monastic Ram Krishna order. Ram Krishna's followers came to regard him as an avatar, a divine incarnation, as did some of the prominent Hindu scholars of his day. Ah, and he also has once said, once a person has faith, he has achieved everything. Thank you and have a nice day. So you're on mute.
Okay, I unmute. Oh, okay, sorry. So excellent, uh, Swastik. Very nice story, which is associated with the temple, Kali Temple. Uh, have, have you gone there, uh, Swastik? Have you been there? Uh, sir, not personally, but I plan to going to it on December. Very good. I have been there, and those who live in uh, those who are from Bengal or that area, they must have seen it, and it is quite a thing to see. There are a lot of practices which our shastras don't actually um, uh, let do it. Okay. Once you go there, we will tell you experience later on when you go in December. Okay. Okay. So, coming back to our topic, that is Rajya Vidya, Rajya Guhya Vidya. And Guhya Tamam means the greatest secret which Krishna is revealing in this chapter, chapter 9. In this part of chapter, we have already seen what is Brahman from the shloka number 4th to 10th. It is the Brahma Swarupam. He says there are two natures of Brahman and it is one is Maya Shakti and Ishvara Shakti. The real Swarupa though is not known to all of us. And one of the example is like the ocean and the waves. So waves are Maya, ocean we know is Ishvara. But basically the water is a Tattva or the Brahman. Today to explain us more further in detail, I have allotted Akash who will speak about the different properties of Brahman explained in the last six verses. Go ahead, Akash. Yes, sir. Hari Om. Dear friends, today I will talk about some of the properties of Brahman. So, what is Brahman or who is Brahman? No human can ever answer this question perfectly as the concept of Brahman is something which is much beyond the human intellect. Although it is impossible to define Brahman in words, the wise portray him as the singular eternal consciousness principle which lends sentiency to every living being and which lends existence to every non-living thing in this universe. In other words, he is the only entity in the universe which is permanent and which has an independent existence. In Vedanta, Brahman is often known as Nirguna Brahman, or the one with no attributes. So it may sound somewhat contradictory to this statement when we say we will learn about the properties of Brahman. As we know, the concept of Brahman is extremely subtle. One way to explain this contradiction is that while Brahman is indeed Nirguna, we, when we talk about the properties of Brahman, we're only talking about some adjectives which help us to get a better understanding of his true nature. In verses 9.4 to 9.10 of the Bhagavad Gita, six of these properties are described. Let's try to understand these today. Sarvagataha. The first char characteristic is Sarvagataha. Sarvagataha means all-pervading pervading that which doesn't have boundaries that which is present everywhere and at all times brahman pervades in and through the entire universe adharatvam adharatvam which is usually sarva adharatvam means the one which supports everything else brahman is the supporting principle for the entire universe in vishnu sasranama one of the words used to describe Vishnu is Vishwadharam, which also means the same. Asangatva. Asangatva means remaining unaffected. Although Brahman pervades the entire universe, he remains unaffected by the objects within it. The best example to understand this is space. Just as space is unaffected by everything that exists within it and remains to exist, no matter what we put into it or take out of it. Similarly, Brahman is unaffected by the events and changes happening in the universe and he has a permanent existence. Akartatvam Akartatvam means not having a sense of doership. What this means that Brahman by himself doesn't involve in any action, good or bad. He only provides the support for the actions to be performed. This is somewhat similar to the way in which electricity itself doesn't perform any action, but enables the gadgets like fans, lights, televisions, etc. to perform their functions. 
Since Brahman is not directly involved with the action, he is also abhokta, that is, he is free from the results of the action as well. Earlier, we have seen that the Lord is the creator of the universe, as well as the karma phaladatha. These are also actions and they are done by the Lord himself. And why do we say that he is akarta? This is because he performs these actions with an udasina or an indifferent attitude without any attachment to the results. This is how he becomes akarta and abhokta. Arupam. Arupa means nirakara or formless. Brahman doesn't have any form. Krishna says that it is indeed difficult for devotees to worship the formless Brahman, especially in the initial stages of the spiritual journey. Krishna says that it is difficult for the embodied to comprehend the formless. Hence, in verse 7.21, Krishna says that in whatever celestial form a devotee seeks to worship him with faith, uh, he will steady the faith of such a devotee in that form. This means we can worship Brahman in the form of any, de any of our favorite gods like Krishna, Rama, Hanuman or Goddess Saraswati. Ajam Ajam means birthless. Unlike ordinary humans, Brahman has no birth or death. He is permanent. Hence, we may get a question that Krishna himself was born to Devaki. He died many years after the Kurukshetra war. So why do we call him Ajam? We can understand this when we recall the fact that Krishna is no ordinary human. He was an avatara. He was a manifestation of Brahman. He had come for a specific purpose and left once that was accomplished. His physical body too was different from the physical body of ordinary humans. So while Krishna as an avatara had a beginning and an end, the eternal Brahman is birthless. Haryon, thank you. Excellent, excellent. What else I can say? Akash has done 10% what I wanted. And this revision of we can't call properties, but an adjective is given to Brahman because we can't describe Brahman. We can't feel, touch, smell, do anything with our five limited senses. So I need more people to try and describe Brahman in the next and coming classes. So I don't want to force anyone. Just give me your names, whoever wants to do it and try it out uh, in your own way. As Akash has ex excellently explained, and Nayana was asking, what did we do from in the last class? So this is what we did. We explained the Swarupa of Brahman. He is everywhere. He is in everything. Okay. Then he is Adharam. Jagat Adhara. So he is basically the substratum of the entire universe, galaxies, whatever you can see. And he is Asangatvam. Whatever comes in his way, he doesn't get affected by it. Just like the projector, the, uh, the screen which shows the movie doesn't get affected by the scenes shown on it. And then he is the, actually the Shrishti Stiti Layakarta. Like Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh is none other than Brahman himself. So, as we see in the last spider example, he creates from his own Nabi, he creates the web. That means the entire web of the galaxies. And then once the work is done, that part of galaxy is taken back. So that is Shrishti Stiti Layakarta. And there is Anadi Anantatvam of Lord. Because that cycle, it is cyclical time. It is not, the time itself is included in the cycle. So there is no beginning or no end. And in the final thing is Asangatvam Akarta Abhokta. So he doesn't like sunlight. The light through some medium comes through earth. The light is given for all of us equally. So it doesn't matter for sun to reach. It is upon how you use the light. Some use the light to read, get knowledge. Some try to steal or some try to do some wrong deeds. The sunlight, the sun doesn't get affected by it. Similarly, Bhagwan doesn't get affected by anything what you and me do. Just like the electricity, he gave the example. 
electricity is there in everything but in the bulb it will it will light up in the fan it will rotate in the sound box it will throw sound so it is different depending upon what that object does so children that consciousness within all of you is same but what you do with that whether you get up early in the morning do surya namaskara do puja or you sleep till the mid afternoon and then waste your time it is all up to you because sun is going to rise sun is going to set god is there within you he is going he was there before you he is there after you what you do with that substratum is very important and i hope this exercise of knowing the god within you will continue by some more children now today's class we will begin with nithila's verse 9.11 nithila today we don't have a ma'am so uh, you try to chant in your way and we will chant after you yes sir hari om avajananti maam mudah परम भाव अजान हेलो सर कैन हियर मी नाउ आई कैन हियर यू परम भाव अजान मम भूत महेशर दि मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्स इज अजनता नॉट नोइंग परम भाव महय नेचर भूत महेशर as the great lord of all beings mudaha those deluded ones avajananti look down upon ashritam who have taken tanum a human form not knowing my higher nature as the great lord of all beings those deluded ones look down upon me who have taken a human form dhanyavad thank you nithila thank you for excellent chanting and explaining in your own way children let us take the example of ganesh chaturthi itself and i this verses from 11th till 20th as already brahman is uh, explained in from 4 to 10 now lord vishnu wants to express what is samsara ha can anyone tell me what is samsara the cycle where you are born and like um... samsara is a family okay one is saying cycle one is saying journey can anyone tell the definition of samsara which we have done anyone from the samsara is like a tree ha unless you cut it down it will live until its own death correct so samsara is raga dvesha raga shoka and moha with anything in this our lifetime we have always have lot of desires desire to do something desire to go somewhere and once we desire something we get it then we have attachment to it like you have a new toy you will have attachment to it and once the toy is gone you will have lot of sorrow or you know shokaha you will start crying about it so this is what is samsara and in 12th to 20th verse lord krishna is explaining us about the karanam why this happens to lot human beings now to understand this let us take a simple example of the festivity which you are having now the nesha festivity see the if you have knowledge right knowledge then you will have right desire then if you have right desire you will go for right things to do in life but now the understanding of ganesh festivity is only limited to dance enjoy do lot of sound and do lot of this pollution and just pass time that is what is creating samsara within us but the real upaya is you do a puja you don't do dance in front of lord himself 
you do puja and do meditation sit in quiet mood for some time enliven the lord within you and you don't spoil the environment by getting lot of murtis made up of lot of colors you should have eco friendly murtis and this time of puja which is given to you should be utilized not to be wasted on uh, such activities which we generally see children so that is samsara upaya which will be given after 20th verses by lord vishnu i just give you a small example of it and with that lord vishnu's avatara buddha avatara is going to be explained by vinayak today over to you vinayak hari om the story of lord buddha avatar who is the incarnation of lord vishnu look at the cute little prince it's buddha right now he is called siddhartha gautama his parents believe that this little guy will become something extraordinary to know this first sure they ask uh, astrologer to consult the star about the future the astrologer said he will either become a very powerful ruler or he become a holy man siddhartha grow up and get married and had kids but one day siddhartha drive his car outside the place a palace arai he sees an old man a sick man a beggar and a monk in the street he also drives by a dead man he get disappointed about this and he doesn't want to suffer and he doesn't want anyone easily to do so he lives leaves his wife and children he sits under a buddhi tree to meditate having here he desires to stay until he is found the solution after having meditation for 49 days he realizes realizes what wrong the humans are never satisfied they always want more and this wanted to have more never ends and then the suffer, suffering never end either thank you excellent excellent vinayak can you tell your age vinayak 8 years see vinayak is only 8 years and he has beautifully told the story and the moral the moral here is every desire will bring you to do some work and with every work you will get some phalam it may be good or it may be bad and with every phalam you will again get lot of birth rebirths and that is samsara for you so that's where meditation is required and buddha did for so long and he got all enlightened means what he understood if you zero down your desires you will not have any problems in life for children it is difficult to zero down i would consider have good desires have legitimate desires have content with some desires but not to have like after having one ice cream not to go for second third and go on like that because desire never ends and that's a very good story by vinayak and 8 years old especially he is one of the youngest of all all the students I really congratulate to him thank you vinayak we go to the 12th verse and i think shriram has uh, difficulty doing it shriram is it yes, okay sir. if you just chant it somehow and explain just whatever you can So I like I was not, I did not practice chanting also sir so I cannot no okay so let us uh, who would like to lead the chanting anyone sir can I sir can I who is that dhimahi dhimahi go on dhimahi om 
मोघा समोघ कर्मानो राक्षस राक्षसी मासुरी एक्सिलेंट धीमय वेरी करेज ऑफ यू यू कुड चैंड सो वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच श्रीराम कैन यू जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दिस वर्ड सर so um these indiscriminate ones who are full of vain hopes vain pursuits vain knowledge they take to rajasik and tamasik nature which deludes them so bhagwan is basically saying the like the worldly people who are f- like full of this uh, worldly hopes worldly pursuit this material uh, gain material desires and uh, like false knowledge false knowledge in the sense like not the real knowledge real knowledge means the knowledge of brahman who like don't know about them and who don't even want to learn about them like who are blinded by this world they like they their nature is rajasik and tamasik nature and it that nature deludes them from bhagwan from the main goal thank you sir excellent shriram excellent so the indiscriminate ones viche tesh saha means these people don't have the buddhi or they have it but they don't use it in short they are fools and these people do all the wrong pursuits to achieve brahman because they are having wrong knowledge so they do have wrong desires they do wrong fulfillment and they achieve wrong results so such people are generally rajasik or tamasik which we will see in 17th chapter about who is rajasik sorry 16th chapter who is rajasik tamasik satvik uh with some more explanation see a stage of human karmas is divided like this janati ichchati yatati it is very simple for example there is a new iphone and now i got the knowledge there is a new iphone coming what will happen immediately we desire to have that hold of the iphone in your hand ichchati and definitely you will march ahead some or the other way to get it yathati but if you don't get hands on it you will get frustrated this is how the stages of human karma start i just give an example of a phone but it might be a job for someone it might be a promotion for someone it might be rank first in the class or it might be someone getting the medal in some competition but it should not be that way it should be a knowledgeable correct knowledge which can be applied correctly get the correct way of going through it and then fulfill the desires correctly to achieve happiness peace and security but what happens mostly people have wrong knowledge janati iti wrong then what will happen ichchati also wrong and finally your marga will be wrong so the right way of human karmas are understanding should be correct that as a child i should learn i should learn things for your own benefit not of others once you have correct knowledge what will you do you study and study and study to get some good knowledge and degrees and for that your self effort focus is required so your goal should be fixed you should walk towards the goal and achieve that medal in your life so this is the stages of a correct human karmas with that we come to 9.13 verse it is samruti or sashank uncle me uncle sashank okay sashank go ahead yes uncle hari om today i got a chance to chant the 13th verse of 9th chapter mahatmanastu maam partha 
ദൈവീം പ്രകൃതിം ആശ്രിതി അനന്യ മനസോ സോ ദ മീനിങ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് വേഴ്സ് ഇസ് മഹാത്മാ മഹാത്മാസ് ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് സോൾസ് തു മീ മാ മന്തോ മാമന്തോ പാർത്ത ഓ സൺ ഓഫ് ഓ സൺ ഓഫ് പാർത്ത ദൈവീം ഡിവൈൻ പ്രകൃതി പ്രകൃതി നേച്ചർ ആശ്രിത ഹാവിംഗ് ടേക്കൺ ഷെൽട്ടർ ഓഫ് ഭജന്തി രണ്ട് സർവീസ് അനന്യ 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 മനസ് മനസ വിത്തൌട്ട് ഡീവിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ മൈൻഡ് ജ്ഞാത്വ നോയിങ് ഭൂത of creation adim the origin avyayam inexhaust uh, inexhaustible in this verse lord krishna says o son of partha those who are not deluded the great souls are under the protection of the divine nature they are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the supreme personality of godhead o- original and inexhaustible excellent so you have all seen first the moodas the fools who are tamasic and rajasic nature in the last verse and in this verse they are telling about satvic nature so those people who use their buddhi correctly and they know that lord has taken the lower form krishna is only an avatar to fulfill the uh, commitments what god has to do he has to remove all the adharmic people but after that Yeah. its life is over he has to perish that is the lower nature of lord but those who are understood the real nature which is imperishable we cannot it cannot end any time those people who have this understanding they do meditation they are focus mind and they only achieve the highest they realize the lord is none other than themselves aham brahma asmi so with that we have dr ambika who will tell us the significance of gauri ganesha festival which is happening in india now ambika go ahead hey om shri gurubhyo namaha next slide so we have celebrated the ganesha festival yesterday so can anyone tell me on what date is every year the ganesha festival comes on the same date or it comes on different different dates it comes on different 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 dates yeah so which calendar we follow we don't follow the gregorian calendar or popularly like the uh, calendar which we all are familiar with the english calendar panchanga we follow the hindu calendar yeah hindu the panchanga calendar. yeah so when it comes it comes on the chaturthi the chaturthi means the fourth day of shukla paksha So what do we mean by Shukla Paksh? The 15 days from Amavasya to the Purnami in the month of the Bhadra Prada. And according to our the Gregorian calendar, it comes in the month of August or September. Okay, next slide. Okay. Now, whenever we worship somebody, or whenever we worship, sorry, a God, so we should know why we are worshiping it. so whenever we idealized or whenever we choose a somebody as an idol our a idol which we worship we want to have of that of a higher order means higher order means the best of the qualities the best of the attributes because whenever we are imagining something what happens we want the best thing suppose if i ask you make a painting so you will paint something which attracts you or which you are familiar with or which you want to have it so whenever we are uh, seeing the idol we are having the best or the higher orders we want to see in it and we see in our sanatan dharma we have number of deities like for saraswati it's a 
devi of knowledge okay no they uh, say so now or they we have the deities who represents the immense amount of values over skills and the cap uh, capabilities like rod rama saraswati shiva bhagwan shiva so and so forth now again which is the god which is evoked first or whom we pray first before starting any work it is lord ganesha why ganesha ma'am because he is a vigna harta he takes over all obstacles okay so before beginning of any work we pray to the lord ganesha or to mark the beginning of any auspicious occasion we worship lord ganesha what is ganapati means ganapati means the lord or the leader of ganas who are the ganas they are the lord shiva attendants so he is the controller of all the ganas who are the attendants of the lord shiva next slide okay now if you want to symbolize this everyone has seen the ganpati idol and all of us have mostly all of us have in our home so when we want to see what does it mean now we have the ganpati has the a head or the full of elephant then he has a big belly then he has four hands then he has a vahan as a mushaka so what does it symbolizes or what do we can learn from it see it has got a big head means it has the uh uh one it has big heads means it has got higher mind or intellect intellect and how does an intellect help us it helps us to discriminate discriminate amongst what good and bad to discriminate what is good for us what is bad for us right and wrong and he big head also means he can he is a very uh, buddhimata like he is very intellectual also then he has got a big ears big ears means what you should discipline yourself to listen to others thought okay small eyes or the eyes are small compared to the full face so it means that you should be able to concentrate on your goal so only when you concentrate then only you will be able to achieve your goal whatever you have thought of it because without concentration it is very difficult to achieve your goal then you have okay then you have one tusk so when you tusk if you have observed that, that ganesha has got a tusk but one is broken and one is in the full form so what does it means it means that only one tusk is there it is dwanda tita it is beyond the duality and it is there is this one more story also goes is like when veda vyasa asked ganesha to write the mahabharata then the ganesha has taken the one of his tusk and have used as a pen so what does it mean also that this, he has sacrificed his tusk for giving the knowledge to the other so that also means like whenever you want to achieve something in the life you have to see the better part of it you have to ignore something you have to sacrifice your some desires or some thing which you have thought of in order to gain the higher knowledge and then we also see the vahana of ganesha is mushaka so what does it means that we all know the mushaka or the mouse it cuts and cuts the things into the pieces so what it is cutting it's, like it's cutting our ego so whenever it's like it's cuts and ego like the mushaka cuts the cloth or make it unusable or not if we will not be able to use it if we have a desires or a ego that will be cutting our the personality so what we should have this mushaka in this mushaka the ganesha is sitting so what is doing he is controlling all our desires all our ego and then we are able to achieve something which we have thought of it or which is on the path of a knowledge so we need a deity like ganesha to control our desires our ego our ahamkara and we have to have a humility 
if you want to go or if you want a success in the life the overall if this is the symbolic things of the ganesha so apart from worshiping ganesha we should also try to get all these qualities in ourselves in order to grow because whenever we grow then only we will be calling as a we will be becoming a better human beings that's it hari om hari om thank you ambika thank you so much and with uh, that understanding let us worship ganesha in this ganesh chaturthi and similarly in every uh, worship like which will come after this this all chaturmasa is full of festivity let us try and understand the subtle meaning of the worship like in navratri we have one one devi for each day so let us worship that part of bhagwan rather than the uh, form part like celebrations should be there but not go only through celebrations you should also sit meditate upon the form of lord ganesha i hope children you will understand and you will try to next time when you see ganesha's idol try to see it symbolize these things and understand from it 14th verse is samruddhi's verse go ahead samruddhi yes sir satatam kirtayanto maam satatam kirtayanto maam yatantascha trida prataha नित्ययुक्ता उपासते उपासते The meaning of this verse is satatam always kirtayanta constantly praising mam me cha striving yatanta with a firm uh, resolve cha namastansya and sur- surrendering to me mam bhaktya with devotion nitya yukta steadfast upasate worship me always singing my divine glories striving with great determination and humbly bowing down before me they constantly worship me in loving devotion however one must remember that in the process of kirtan hearing and chanting are helpers the essence is to remember god if we leave it out the kirtan will not purify the mind thus shri krishna says here that his devotees to kirtan I'll constantly engage in the mind in thinking of him. They practice this with great determination for the purification of the mind. Hari Om. Thank you. Excellent. So this is a very important verse because it tells the quality of devotees and quality one should have to get the your goal, whatever you have targeted a goal, should achieve it. So he is. doing it steadfastly he is not just doing one day and forgetting the next day and with full devotion doesn't matter what is the situation he will be devoted to lord and he surrenders everything what he has and very very firm in his resolve to achieve what he wants to and is always trying to get there these are the few qualities which lord has answered for us and the same qualities should be there with students who want to achieve their degrees or even for the sports or their dance whatever forms they are taken with that we come to the last verse today shivam go ahead shivam shivam is there ma'am i sir i think he is not there okay then with that we will take 15th verse in the next uh, class with that we will come to the end of the class and i would like uh, sashank to sum up the class uh, before that okay sashank can you sum up the class in 2 3 minutes if you are there yes uncle so 
uh, we in this class we uh, learnt about the Dakshinesh uh, Varakali temple and then we also uh, learnt about uh, the properties of Brahman. Uh, then we uh, chanted verses from 9.11 to 9.14 and uh, we also um, learnt about how um, we we uh, are uh, we are getting more bonded to sams uh, samsara and uh, that's all good nice we also learned from dr ambika how to worship lord ganesha and understand his subtle forms and the meanings of his forms with and also the story of buddha as a buddha avatar of lord vishnu himself with that, I would like you to chant Sashank this mantra and we'll end the class too. Yes, Uncle. Om Purnamada. You continue, you continue. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudashyate Purnasya Purnamataya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sadguru Bhyona Maha Hari Om Thank you Sashank. Thank you Ambika. Thank you everyone who participated. Even though today is Ganesh festivals, but all these kids who joined today are really dear to me. And they are dear to Lord Krishna also. Thank you.